Salut tout le monde et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome back to Coffee Break French. Now, we're continuing to talk about the imperfect tense today. Last time, we learned that there's only one verb in French which has an irregular stem in the imperfect tense. That's être. So, can you remember how to conjugate that? J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Voilà, très bien. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to be continuing to talk about the imperfect and talk in particular about when the imperfect is used to translate was doing or were doing. Also, to translate what you used to do. I used to do something. I used to go to the swimming pool or whatever. And the other use of the imperfect is when you're talking about descriptions in the past. All this will become much clearer after you listen to this lesson. And I hope you enjoy lesson 64 of Coffee Break French. So today we're going to begin by looking at the first use of the imperfect that we've already covered. And that's the imperfect used for was doing or were doing something. Let's practice this concept with a few examples. Anna, how would you say, I was speaking to your mother? Try that. Je parlais avec ta mère. Je parlais avec ta mère. Okay, what about, we were eating some bread? Anna? Nous. Mangeons du pain. Nous mangeons du pain. Mm -hmm. And what about, um, let's take, they were drinking some wine. Now, actually, this is quite a tricky one because the verb boire, to drink, is irregular in the present tense. So, Anna, can you remember how you say, we drink? Is it nous Boivons? Not quite. Nous boivons, in a sense, would be quite regular, but it's nous buvons. B U V O N S. Nous buvons. So if it's nous buvons in the present tense, how would you say they were drinking in the imperfect? Ils buvaient. Ils buvaient. Très bien. So they were drinking some wine. Ils buvaient. Du vin. Il buvait du vin. Uh -huh. And using the partitive article for some wine, and in the last one as well, some bread. Du vin, du pain. Okay, so that's the imperfect tense used for was doing or were doing something. Now, we also learned that that was doing or were doing something can be interrupted. And when it's interrupted, it's most likely to be interrupted with a perfect tense. So, I was talking to your mother... That's the roller, and then the thum comes in with the perfect tense when the telephone rang. So, Anna, can you translate the whole of that? I was speaking to your mother when the telephone rang. Je parlais avec ta mère quand le téléphone a sonné. Très bien. Je parlais avec ta mère quand le téléphone a sonné. Sonné is the verb to ring. So, when the telephone rang, you use the perfect tense, quand le téléphone a sonné. So, I was speaking to your mother, the roller, quand le téléphone a sonné, thum, perfect tense. Je parlais avec ta mère quand le téléphone a sonné. Okay, let's take the bread one. We were eating some bread when I saw your father. Nous mangeons du pain quand j'ai vu ton père. Excellent. Nous mangeons du pain, the imperfect tense, we were eating bread or some bread, quand j'ai vu ton père, when I saw your father. Now, here we're using the perfect tense, that's the thum that interrupts our eating of bread. Nous mangeons du pain quand j'ai vu ton père. And the, the idea is that we stopped eating bread because I saw your father. I have no idea why your father didn't want us to eat bread. But nonetheless, <laughs> nous mangeons du pain quand j'ai vu ton père. And for example, the third one, they were drinking some wine when I arrived. Nous 
Il buvait du vin quand je suis arrivée. Très bien. What would you have to remember about the arrivée there? I had to remember that it was an être verb. It is indeed, and therefore you would have to... Um, you have to add an extra e to the end of the verb. Of the past participle. Yes. Correct. So, il buvait du vin. They were drinking some wine. That's the roller. Quand je suis arrivé, thtoum. When I arrived, that's the one that interrupts the drinking of the wine. Okay. So that's the first use of the imperfect that we're going to cover today. Was or were doing something. Now the second use of the imperfect is similar in a way. This is when you're talking about a habitual or an ongoing action. Now the main way that we use this in English is with the expression used to do something. So for example... We used to eat cheese every day. Okay? We used to eat cheese every day is an ongoing or a habitual action. It's something that we did every day. So, Anna, how would you say we used to eat cheese every day? And you're translating we used to eat by the imperfect tense. Nous mangeons du fromage tous les jours. Très bien. Nous mangeons du fromage Tous les jours. So we literally were eating, but it's how you say we used to eat in French as well. Nous mangeons du fromage tous les jours. So we used to eat cheese every day. Now, if you saw the sentence or if you heard the sentence, nous mangeons du fromage tous les jours, you really have the option of translating that as we were eating cheese every day or we used to eat cheese every day. And it depends very much on the context, on exactly how you translate it. Let's take another example. Um, I used to go to the swimming pool every Saturday. So you would say, I used to go to the swimming pool, or I was going to the swimming pool all the Saturdays. And I try that. J'allais à la piscine tous les samedis. Très bien. And aller, although it's irregular in the present tense, is perfectly regular in the imperfect tense. So, j'allais à la piscine tous les samedis. So, I used to go to the swimming pool every Saturday. Now, let's add to this a little. Let's say, when I was young, I used to go to the swimming pool every Saturday. Which tense are we going to use for when I was young? Um, The imperfect. Yeah, because when I was young is the same idea here. We're actually talking about the habitual action of being young. When I was being young, I used to go to the swimming pool every Saturday. So how would you say then, when I was young, I used to go to the swimming pool every Saturday? Quand j'étais jeune, je suis allé à la piscine tous les samedis. Now, are you sure about that? We're talking about habitual actions. You said, je suis allé. What tense is that? That is the perfect tense. Yeah, so je suis allé, that would be one specific occurrence. That's a narrative tense. When I was young, I went to the swimming pool one Saturday and I discovered that I liked swimming or whatever. But you'd see the difference there. When I was young, I used to go. We have to use the imperfect. But when I was young, I went it could be translated with the imperfect as well. You chose to translate it with the perfect, and that's wrong in this situation. Okay, so it would have to be j'allais à la piscine tous les samedis. Exactly. So when I was young, quand j'étais jeune, j'allais à la piscine tous les samedis. So two imperfects there. Quand j'étais jeune, j'allais à la piscine tous les samedis. Okay? Mm-hmm. Let's go back to eating cheese every day. Let's say, when we were in France, we used to eat cheese every day. Again, what tenses are you going to be using here? Imperfect and imperfect. Absolutely. So, when we were in France, quand nous um, étions en Fran- France, quand nous étions en France, um, nous mangeions Du fromage tous les jours. Très bien. Quand nous étions en France, nous mangions du fromage tous les jours. 
So when we were in France, we used to eat cheese every day. Très bien. Now, I'd like to pick up on something here. Anna translated, I went to the swimming pool as je suis allé à la piscine. And the thing is, in English, if your sentence is, I went to the swimming pool, then in actual fact, you don't know whether you're going to have to use a perfect tense or an imperfect tense. You need more context. You need a further explanation of when it was that you went to the swimming pool. Was it on one occasion? Last Thursday, I went to the swimming pool. Or was it something that you did on an ongoing basis, a habitual basis? When I was young, I went to the swimming pool every Saturday. Can I went to the swimming pool be replaced with I used to go to the swimming pool? And if so, does it still mean the same thing? So this is quite an interesting concept of how we translate particular words and particular constructions in English and use the correct tense in French. And this is really why we're looking at these different situations of using the imperfect So, a habitual or an ongoing action, which can be translated as used to, or indeed, which can be translated as a simple past in English. So, when we were in France, we ate cheese every day. It's the same as we used to eat cheese every day, isn't it? Yep. So, it can be translated as used to, or as a simple past in English. And there's actually another translation that is a little bit complicated, because it can be a little bit confusing. But I'm sure that our Coffee Break French listeners will be spot on with this by now. And that's the translation of would. There's a way that we can speak in English when we're evoking a past memory. For example, we would walk on the beach in the evening and we would look at the stars and we would listen to the the, the waves lapping on the shore and so on. This is all very evocative of a time in the past. In actual fact, this would is exactly the same as used to. So if you can replace would with used to without changing the meaning, then again, it's habitual or ongoing actions we're talking about. So let's take the example of we would walk on the beach in the evening. That's the same as we used to walk on the beach in the evening. And it's also the same as we were walking on the beach in the evening. Although these are slightly different concepts in English, we still use the imperfect tense in French. So let's use the verb se promener, to walk or to have a walk. And Anna, can you try translating we used to walk on the beach in the evening or we would walk on the beach in the evening in this evocative past? Nous nous promenions à la plage. Okay, À la plage would mean we walked to the beach, in this sense. So, on the beach. Sur? Sur la plage, that's it. So, we used to walk on the beach. Nous nous promenions sur la plage in the evening. Les soirs? Les... Mm, that's tricky. It, you can actually just use the singular in French. You can just say le soir. And that can mean in the evenings. Okay? Or in the evening. If you said tous les soirs, it would mean all the evenings. But in the evening, in this kind of general sense, le soir. Le soir. Nous nous promenions sur la plage le soir. Nous nous promenions sur la plage le soir. Excellent. So that's the second use of the imperfect, where it's an ongoing or habitual action, and it's translated as a simple past in English sometimes, but more commonly used to, or sometimes would do. Now, I don't want you to get confused with would do because it's a different type of would do. For example, when you say, I would travel around the world if I had lots of money, we'll be coming to that type of would in a future lesson. But for just now, if you think of the would as an equivalent of used to, then you'll be on the right lines. There's a third use of the imperfect that I'd like to look at today. And this is actually a very easy one. It's when you're describing things in the past and describing certain things, for example, physical things or emotional things. And every time I've taught this, I've always used a little mnemonic that I came up with a few years back. And that is 
Prince Philip changes his wig frequently. Now, I have to say I don't want to get into trouble with the royal family or anything like that, and we're simply using this as an educational tool, and I'm sure Prince Philip doesn't wear a wig. In fact, I know he doesn't wear a wig. Anyway, Prince Philip changes his wig frequently. The reason for this is that if you take the initial letter of each of these words, you get the different kind of things that you can describe in the past with the imperfect tense. So let's take the first P. If you're describing people, then you use the imperfect tense if you're describing them in the past. Michel was nice. Michel était sympa. The second P could stand for places. So if you're describing a place in the past, then you would use the imperfect. The museum was interesting. Anna, can you try saying the museum was interesting using the imperfect tense of être? Le musée était intéressant. Le musée était intéressant. Okay. So the C of Prince Philip changes his wig. The C could be for clothes or indeed for colours. So let's try saying he was wearing a red jumper. So they were describing the jumper and also describing what he was wearing. We're describing clothes in the past using the imperfect tense. To wear is... Porter. Porter, as in the phrase prêt à porter, ready to wear. Porter, in the infinitive, becomes he was wearing, in the imperfect. Il portait. Il portait a red jumper. Our jumper is un pull. Un pull rouge. Un pull rouge. Il portait un pull rouge. Okay, let's move on then. We've had people, places, clothes and colours. The next one is H. And I would suggest that stands for hair. So if you're describing someone's hair in the past, then you use the imperfect. She had black hair. Now, I think we've covered this already. To describe someone's hair in French, you don't say she has or she had black hair. You say she has or had the hair black. So how would you say she had the hair black? Elle avait... Les cheveux noirs. That's right. And the hair in French is plural. So it's actually the hairs. Elle avait les cheveux noirs. Elle avait les cheveux noirs. But the important point here, of course, is that we're using the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense of avoir. Nous avons, in the present, take off the ONS and add the imperfect endings. Elle avait les cheveux noirs. So that's H for hair. Prince Philip changes his wig, the W for wig, I would suggest, stands for weather. So, it was sunny. How do you say it is sunny? Il fait du soleil. Il fait du soleil. Okay, so we're taking the verb faire, and the new form in the present tense of faire, we do or we make, is? Nous faisons. Nous faisons, take off the ONS, form the imperfect tense of faire. It was sunny. Il faisait du soleil. Il faisait du soleil. Okay? How would you say it was sunny that day? And I see if you remember back to when we were doing our demonstrative adjectives and learning how to say this day as opposed to that day. Is that when we add the C and la on? Exactly. So how do you say that day? Ce jour-là. Très bien. So it was sunny that day. Il faisait du soleil ce jour-là. I was wearing a red jumper. Je portais un pull rouge. I had black hair. J'avais des, les cheveux noirs. Uh-huh. The museum was interesting. Le musée était intéressant. <laughs> Très bien. Okay, you're getting the idea. We're describing things in the past. We're using Prince Philip changes his wig so far. P for people, P for places, C for clothes and colour, H for hair, W for weather. But he changes his wig frequently. And when he changes his wig frequently, then the F stands for feelings. So describing feelings... You use the imperfect tense in the past. In fact, when you're describing most things in the past, you use the imperfect tense, unless in specific situations. But we'll come to them another time. Let's take feelings. How would you say, I am hungry? 
J'ai faim. Yeah, because in French you say I have hunger. So hunger is a feeling. How would you say therefore I was hungry? J'avais faim. J'avais faim. Okay, I was hungry. Literally, I was having hunger. J'avais faim. Let's think of another feeling. To want to do something is often a feeling, if you've got the feeling that you want to do something. So, how would you say, I didn't want to go there? Anna? Je ne voulais pas aller là. Je ne voulais Almost right. You could say that in certain situations, but you would be better to use that little pronoun that we covered in Lesson 61. Can you remember the one letter word? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a Y and finishes with a Y. E? <laughs> e. I didn't want to go there. Je ne voulais pas y aller. Je ne voulais pas y aller. Très bien. Je ne voulais pas y aller. I didn't want to go there. That's your feeling. You're describing your feeling and therefore you're using the imperfect tense. Let's briefly go back to j'avais faim. And I want to explain something here. I said that when we're describing things in the past, we tend to use the imperfect. Now, there is an example of situations when you might not use the imperfect tense. If, for example, you suddenly were hungry, all of a sudden I was hungry. I realised I had nothing to eat and all of a sudden I was hungry. Then there you would use the perfect tense because it's not describing your ongoing feeling. That would be j'ai eu faim. Eu being the past participle of avoir. J'ai eu faim. Now think of that. You're actually making part of the narrative of your story there. If you say j'ai eu faim, all of a sudden I was hungry, that's part of the narrative. It's not really the ongoing description. So that's why I'm not saying you always, always describe things in the past with the imperfect tense. But most of the time, when you're describing things and you're describing their ongoing characteristics of people, places, clothes, colours, hair, weather and feelings, then you tend to use the imperfect tense. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench. And we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.